I'm going to start today off with a little bit of behind the scenes action. I like to film these intros with the garage door open so we get some nice natural light. And I really need to make a decision about the pile so that I can close the garage for a few minutes because it is frigid. Absolutely beautiful day though. I mean, look at this. Look at this. I mean, get real. Look at that. Okay, what do we want today? What do we want to do? What's in that pile? This mountain mahogany log is calling my name right now, but we just barely did our mountain mahogany in Nevada, so I should probably branch out a little bit. You know what, actually speaking of which, I kind of feel like a visit to the shelf of chaos is in order. Russian olive, maybe? Olive, oh, ooh, ooh, okay, okay, I know, yeah. I got an idea. This beautiful piece of wood is from the olive tree, Olea europea. So here's what I'm thinking. Let's carve an olive wood spoon and fork and then use those to make and eat some olive oil cake. First things first, I wanna thank Candler Caldwell from the wood yard in Concord, Georgia for sending me this beautiful piece of wood and giving me an excuse to talk olive trees. The olive is an evergreen tree native to the Mediterranean regions of Europe, Asia, and Africa. They're typically shorter, smaller trees, rarely growing higher than around 30 to 50 feet tall, though some specific varieties can grow to be quite larger. They're also extremely long lived with some of the oldest specimens being estimated to be well over 3000 years old. All right, both pieces are roughed out and ready to carve. I'll tell you right now, olive wood is a pretty hard and dense wood, so hand carving these is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but we'll get through it together. One of the upsides is this wood has like a really distinct, almost kind of fruit-like smell. I really like it. Let's get to carving. They're famously twisted and gnarled trunks and silvery green leaves that stay on the tree year round make the olive a striking specimen, but it is of course the fruit of this tree that we know best. Wild olives were a prominent food staple of humans throughout the region for, well, as long as humans have been around. And the tree was first cultivated sometime around 7,000 years ago. As such, the olive tree has a long and rich history that I could spend hours diving into while barely scratching the surface. Olive branches have long been a symbol of peace and prosperity, they were often worn as crowns by victors of games and conquests alike, and the olive tree and olive oil have symbolic significance across just about every major religion that originated in the tree's native range. This wood is so hard that it's not only taking like a bunch of work, but I've also dinged up two of my gouges, and I'm even worse at sharpening than I am at spoon carving, which says a lot. I will say this though, spoons take me forever to make. On the practical side of things, olive oil has been a crucial resource throughout human history and to this day. The first cultivated olive trees were primarily focused on producing olive oil to fuel lamps with culinary uses as more of an afterthought. The upside to how hard this wood is, is once this is done, let's give me a cool spoon. And today it's still the oil of the olive fruit for which the trees are most prized, with about 90% of cultivated olives being used for oil and only 10% being used for table olives, which need to be cured via fermentation to make them palatable as raw fresh olives are naturally really bitter. The oil extracted from pressing olives is used in cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, soaps, still as a fuel for oil lamps. But today you and I almost certainly know and love the oil of the olive fruit for its many uses in culinary applications. Olive wood, as I'm discovering here, is incredibly hard and dense and extremely attractive with these contrasting light and dark grain patterns, making it a highly prized wood. But considering the tree's smaller size and commercial agricultural importance means that its wood is primarily used for smaller items like kitchen utensils, bowls, cutting boards, and decorative handmade pieces. But yeah, no, this was really some hard, hard wood. It was actually such a pain to hand carve that I ended up doing a lot of bulk material removal on my belt sander before fine tuning with a knife afterward, which is why I'm absolutely covered in sawdust in some of these shots. Those are just a handful of fun facts about the olive tree, but honestly, I feel like I barely dipped my toe into all the stories this tree has to tell. So it's a good thing I've got some wood left over for future videos. Just adding a food safe oil finish going with walrus oil's cutting board finishes here. And would you look at that, our olive wood spoon and fork are both done and I'm absolutely in love with these. Olive wood grain pattern is just so fun to sit and look at and these are both a delight to handle as well. And now we need to put these things to use and honor the olive tree and especially olive 
olive oil, and I really like the idea of baking an olive oil cake. But first... All right, so I figured that olive oil cake on its own just wasn't quite tree-y enough, even though olives come from trees. So, Miles and I are heading up into the mountains to gather some Douglas fir needles. And I'm gonna make some Douglas fir needle sugar for our cake. Here we go, here's a couple in the sun. Yeah, this will do nicely. Ooh, we've got a mountain mahogany there, okay. All right, ooh, some big long needles on this. Uh, we're like tucked under this really cool gamble oak too. This is fun. The fresh new growth needles are the ones that are always gonna taste the best, but we are clearly not in the early summertime when those come out. So we're just gonna harvest some of these old growth ones. Give it a little taste test. Let's see how this tree tastes. I just wanna make sure that it's not overly bitter. Yeah, this is nice, this is nice. All right, I'm gonna harvest some of these and then we'll be ready to go. So the key is to just spread it around a bit. This is pretty unintrusive to a tree like this. All right, so my hands are completely numb, which means I've probably got enough needles. So let's head down. What do you say, Miles? Should we go? You comfy? These mature needles are much tougher and more fibrous than their fresh new growth counterparts. So I'm gonna start by chopping them up a bit, which isn't just fun to do, but smells so, so good. Now, in addition to Douglas fir needles, you can also use other conifers like spruce, pine, true firs. Just, just make sure they're not from the yew tree, which is poisonous. Now just take your needles and some sugar and add them to a food processor. I'm not being terribly precise in my measurements, but a rough one-to-one -one volume ratio is usually a good way to go. Then just give it a good blitzing in the food processor until it's about as mixed as you think it's gonna be. Then spread onto a parchment-lined baking sheet to dry out as the needles have released some water into the sugar. You can also speed this process up by placing it in your oven oven at its lowest temperature for a while. Now, when working with fresh tips, they contain a lot more water, so I've usually had to run it through the processor again when I pull it out of the oven, but this time we can just run it through a fine mesh strainer and use our olive wood spoon to break up any clumps. And now we have this gorgeous pale green and aromatic sugar ready to use for our cake. Speaking of which, you can follow any olive oil cake recipe of your choosing. I'm using one from America's Test Kitchen in which you combine one and three quarter cup or eight and three quarter ounces all-purpose flour, one teaspoon baking powder, and three-fourths teaspoon salt. Set aside and using a stand mixer, whisk together three whole eggs on medium speed for a couple minutes until foamy. One of our other favorite steps, grating some fresh lemon zest, about a quarter teaspoon. Then it's time to add one and one quarter cup or eight and three quarter ounces of our Douglas fir sugar. Just remember to actually measure that out and not dump your entire batch of sugar in there and then have to fish an approximate amount back out of the bowl, thereby kind of bungling your entire recipe for the camera and whip on high for about three minutes until the mixture is fluffy and pale yellow. Reduce speed to medium, and now it's time to slowly pour in three quarters of a cup of a fresh, high quality, extra virgin olive oil until fully incorporated. Add half of your flour mixture and mix on low until combined, then add three quarter cup milk and mix for about 30 seconds until that's combined. Then add the rest of your flour mixture and mix it together until, you guessed it, combined. Now pour the batter into a greased nine inch springform pan and finish by sprinkling some more of that Douglas fir sugar on top of the cake. Then it's 350 degree oven time for about 40 to 45 minutes until the cake is a deep golden brown and a toothpick inserted into the center comes out with a few crumbs attached. Let the pan cool on a wire rack for about 15 minutes, then remove and let it cool completely for about an hour and a half. I think this turned out pretty okay, especially considering I bungled a step or two, but let's serve it up and give it a try. Time to put the olive wood fork and our Douglas fir olive oil cake to the test. Sal, what do you think, buddy? Personally, I think the Douglas fir sugar was like a perfect fit for this cake. I do think that fresh new growth Douglas fir or spruce or fir tips would, would go even better with this recipe, so I will be trying this again in the summertime. It does work really well here. You just get this nice, light, herbal, kind of tree-like flavor at the very end, and I'm obviously a fan of that, so I will continue eating this. And also, I'm in love with this fork, so what was in the pile was a lot of success this week. What's in that pile?